this the threshold of 10. 10 is, is a lucky number, so I'll wait for 10. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show. We're going to get started in just a second. I'm so happy to see all your faces here. I'm excited. It's episode 30. Wow. 30 is the new 20. <laughs> 30 is the new 20. That's uh, okay. Well, we'll say 60 is the new 30 then. Hello. 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 We have okay. so many events going on out there in um, the U.S. and uh, the UAE. We have events happening everywhere around Web3. We're going to deep dive into some of those events exactly. on the current events. But right now, we want to make sure that everybody knows how this process goes. So, Sarah, will you share a little bit of how people can invite others and the audience, their colleagues, their partners? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I thought you'd never ask. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Yes 3.0 podcast, episode number 30, presented to you by Madam Brandy Bayo. Uh, a little bit of a uh, word of um, promotion from our sponsors. Now, I had the opportunity to introduce them a couple of months ago uh, on an event in Dubai because we had the opportunity of working with them for years now. Um, I don't know about you guys. I do uh, want to know how many of you know a West African country, countries like Papua New Guinea, Guinea Bissau. You know, there are parts of the globe where internet is a basic human necessity. How do we talk about the next generation of technological revolution when? You know, we have parts of the world where people lack basic internet. And that's what Casutel is solving. Casutel is providing internet to the whole West Africa countries like Papua New Guinea, uh, Guinea Basu. You can go to their website, www.casutel.com, to get the full picture. Now, here's how they're connected to crypto they powered their entire operation. They raised money through their IPO. Their native token, Cash, C-A-G, is available uh, for grabs. You can check them out on CoinMarketCap as well. Now, for those who don't know what the Coin Republic is, Coin Republic is a leading news organization from Asia. We cover crypto. They have been doing it for a while now. I myself have hosted hundreds of clubhouse events like this. Uh, then the hundreds of Twitter spaces like this. And the Ash 3.0 podcast is definitely one of the most special ones. This has touched a milestone, and there's many more to come for which you have the opportunity to be spotlighted on our articles, the same articles that are read by hundreds and thousands of people every single day. All you have to do is get your hands up you know, get your hands up because apparently we don't have the power to bring you right in. 17 people down there, I would like to request you to get your hands up and Madam Brandy Whale will allow you to join in on the conversation. Without a further ado, the one and only Madam Brandy Whale. Thank you, Sarah. We have tons of people out there right now we could use double or triple the numbers let's talk about this yes 30 abundance and wealth is all about organic growth organic growth within your communities your supporters your biggest fans out there i see a few of you who have been working hard in the impact space and i say hard because you are constant you are always working this next and new economy. And so I want to invite you to have publicity so that you can further your mission and you can have more support. A part of our mission at Yes3 Abundance and Wealth is all about having that organic but yet prosperous mentality where we get to reframe the storytelling, 
because the media out there is changing. Let's face it, you know, not everybody is going to be listening to the news, be reading all of your posts. They're not going to be in your blogs. It's just changing, especially with Web3. So with that being said, I want to talk a little bit about the format today because I see a few of you and I know some of you are raising capital. And I know some of you have asked our company being investments to support you, make sure that your projects are out there as well as having some of the business strategy. So anyone on this call today who is wanting to step up and share a little bit about where they're at and what they're doing, that would be great because we're going to get into the topic of Web3, unpacking the basics of the technology. And I know there's a lot of easy steps for people to get involved, but there's also complexities to it as well. But before we do that, I want to celebrate community. I want to celebrate you and your projects because God knows a new world is here now. And in order to have transparency and collective currencies with transparency being the, the top of the food chain, I want to invite you to speak a little bit further on that. But before we do that, I want to share some news with you. So Rob, will you share with us the top three current events that are happening? Okay, so let's go one by one. Um, we do have BlackRock. Um, you know, uh, BlackRock is a keyword that pops up every now and then. Uh, so I'm, I've seen the news article right now. Uh, uh, ability to tokenize uh, transfer value seamlessly into global gases. So here's what the news is. BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, with trillions of dollars under management recently released its first tokenized fund on Ethereum blockchain, which is a breaking news. The fund named uh, the BlackRock Biddle Fund is a brand new fund specifically created for tokenization containing over 90 repos and three month duration treasuries. This fund functions as a cash management project product, providing a yield similar to the Fed rate, making it safer and liquid investment option, which is a huge deal. Now, token holders receive interest accruals in the form of additional Biddle tokens every 30 days, representing the yield earned by the fund. Uh, Carlos Domingo, founder of CEO of Security, uh, Securitize played a crucial role in facilitating the tokenization of the BlackRock Biddle found, uh, fund on Ethereum. The tokenization of security, especially by a powerhouse like BlackRock, signifies a significant milestone in the integration of traditional finance with blockchain technology. Keep calm, guys. It's happening. It's happening. So a couple of bullet points here as quick as possible. BlackRock's tokenized fund represents a bridge between traditional finance and decentralized world of blockchain. What do you guys think about it? What are the long-term visions of it? Uh, of it? Uh, what are the DeFi concerns, security, blockchain trilemma? A lot to cover. Mike is back to you. And I would like to request all of you guys down there to get your hands up and join in on the conversation and contribute whatever you want to these takes. It's like an op-ed piece, right? When you you know read an op-ed, you see a lot of people piling in with their opinion. That's how it's gonna be like. So yeah, right on there. Yeah, new format. Uh, the new format is we're gonna talk a little bit about the headlines because this story popped out and I could not stop listening to this story. And it just said to me, oh my God, we did it. <laughs> Oh my God, we did it. We're doing it. And then on the second side of that was, oh, wait a second. Is this a monopoly? I don't want to say these words too loud, but wait a minute. If BlackRock is going to have the biggest and, oh, excuse me, the largest asset pool, and now Biddle is the opportunity for all of us, of course, you got to be accredited. And at the end of the day, you should have a community that you're a part of so that you can still invest in an early stage. There's a lot of conversation around this. I'm curious if you're interested, we're going to have about five minute, just popcorn around. Anybody have their thoughts starting with Scott? Yeah, I think the first thought is that is that, yeah, you have to be a credit investor. 
um, I'm, um, and that's fine, but I'm all about empowering all of us to be able to invest. And that's why I love more traditional decentralized crypto. Um, you know, I think it's good that BlackRock's getting involved, especially with the, the Bitcoin ETS, because that's bringing a lot of um, attention to Bitcoin and to crypto. Um, I don't think they're ever going to be able to, you know, confiscate it or anything. But so I'm 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 happy, but I'm also like a little leery about BlackRock and the fact that, you know, are they going to then allow you know uh, the average investor, not just the accredited investors, to be able to take advantage of these tokenized you know assets? So that's my take. All right. And Scott McMillan is also known as a crypto cowboy. He is an investment coach. He's been working with me behind the scenes for some time. And I want to say thank you for showing up and being a part of the community. Thanks, Scott. All right. So uh, I don't want to mispronounce your name. Kalianat? Hello. How are you? Hey, uh, Kalianjit. Yeah. How do you say your name? Kalian. Uh, Kalian. Yeah. Kalyant, pleasure to meet you. You're coming in from Bangalore and Hyderabad. Uh, I'm based in India, so I do travel here and there. So, okay. Uh, what is your take on uh, the the topic of the moment? BlackRock, uh, uh, it's it's one of the biggest. Like it's the big, it's the big, uh, like world's largest asset manager with eight trillion assets. And uh, those who are from the finance industry, they will know what. BlackRock is, and mm -hmm. if they are getting into it, it means that uh, in the times to come, crypto will be big money. Mm -hmm. And uh, regulatory confidence will be there. Then other small players will also get into it. This will lead to a lot of product development, uh, technology and, uh, evolving. And since uh, they are into it, many others will follow them. And it's good for the economy, like it's good for uh, technology, it's good for people like us uh, who are into this field. Tell us a little bit about you. Who who are you and what is your company? Uh, I'm uh, I'm involved in the startups, two or three, like investment. Uh, I'm from tech background, so I'm into programming and all this stuff, uh, the whole ecosystem. So I'm involved in a lot of uh, Web3 projects. Uh, I I help uh, non-tech funders to understand the tech around it. Mm. And uh, so, yeah. Thank and you for being here. Appreciate you. And we're going to just keep on moving because we have several people in the audience I know that are being spotlit today. And I just want to say thank you for being here. And thank you for adding value to that conversation. Stephen Cutter, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know you have a hemp meeting happening in the background, so I want to make sure we hear from you. What do you think about Biddle and BlackRock coming in right now at this perfect moment? Yeah, I saw it in the, this morning, and it's always interesting when these big companies like Microsoft and and KPMG and all these are getting into it. And um, I, I think you're right. It could monopolize the industry. They could sway whole markets by the their buying power, you know. Um, and it, I don't like how it only accredited people. That's not what uh, we're all accredited. We're all humans. Why do we need an accreditation to invest into something we believe in? So I think that that is a elitist um, technique as well. So it's 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 good because it's bringing awareness, like Scott said, but it's also. Uh, you know, these, these guys don't really care what happens with their money as far as the companies they invest in, you know, big oil and uh, the outcomes. So, uh, but awareness to the people in like, uh, like Sarah was saying, um, when countries come online and have access to internet and this technology, we can help bank the bank list and help create new value, um, value system. And, and, and that's what I work on. Just, uh, I work in regenerative finance and, uh, I got a refi gaming company that does, uh, we got a game Earth Defenders. And then I also got a, a hemp company. I'm uh, one of the founders of the Hemp Incubator Company, one of the first accelerator programs in R&D for hemp. And then we also have a hemp token that uh, powers and fuels the, the ecosystem and has a marketplace uh, we'll be releasing at some point this year as well. 
Mm, I'm so happy. You are one of the first people to onboard me into the Web3 gaming space and impact. Uh, Stephen and I were behind the scenes and we were at the uh, Disrupt conference in Dubai. Dubai has been one of the hubs for innovation. Obviously, there's a lot going on. We have Token for 2049 coming up just around the corner. We also have our Web3 World Consortium, which is also presented by the Coin Republic, which is some of the sponsors of this show. So we're moving, we're expanding. I'm so excited that we just keep moving forward, right? Um, let's talk a little bit more about Biddle because what I heard was to read between the lines. I heard, <clears throat> I didn't actually hear accredited. I don't even think that word came up in some of the media that I was looking through. Maybe somebody else. Oh, I didn't see it. I, someone else mentioned that, so I thought, I thought it was, I haven't, it just came out the news. I haven't dove into it deeply yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't so, know if the word accredited, <clears throat> I think it is accredited, but it definitely is like you and like I could not enter it unless I had very substantial means. It is built for their high end customers. I do know that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And but let's talk about this as a community. Reading between the lines is really important. And getting the message behind the message is really important. So we have to have all of our ears and our eyes out right now because when we're ahead of the game, and even though we are pioneers, we also have to pay attention very specifically to words. Because the stories out there that are being created, if we push ourselves out of the inner circle, then we're out of the inner circle. So what I heard was that you have to be a part of a community in order to be a part of that purchase. So let's figure out who those communities are, right? Anybody in the circle right now, maybe Chris Snook, want to speak to this? Hey there, can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, I uh, had to find the mute button. I think I'd know where that is by now. Um, hey, everybody. So uh, can you rephrase the question? I, I apologize. I know it had something to do with community, but I, I missed the part of it as I was looking for the mute button. Yeah, we're just talking about BlackRock and the option for Biddle and all the news that's out there right now. Gotcha. Um, well, I mean, I think, you know, obviously – you can look at that any number of ways. Um, if you if you just take the religion out of it, and you know whether you, like if you if you could take the religion out of it, like I hate Wall Street or I love Wall Street, and you just kind of look at like what those things might mean. You know, obviously, when you take an army of salespeople that uh, are earning fees, regardless of whether they like an asset, believe in an asset or not, but they recognize that people want an asset, i.e. Bitcoin or ETH, if they end up getting that approval, <laughs> um, then it just creates more awareness and it creates, um, it creates something to position against um, and, you know, and differentiate against, which is important, I think, because for decades now, anybody who's been in the game, as long as a lot of us have, like, you're you're telling that story you're positioning against but there's nothing real to like actually lean against there's no there's no status quo or mainstream narrative that is in the populace where where they know what the hell you're talking about and they're certainly not going to go do research or read creature from jekyll island right so um not not normal people anyway so I think, you know, all these things in cannabis, you know, being another industry that's gone through it with Operation Choke Point and like as these things start to converge, um, I think we're just going to see more um, traction. And, you know, the downside of that will be that typically if history serves as any lesson, uh, there are there are humans who tend to recognize these things and front run or end run. Um the the status quo interest as they all put in their positions because they were early they were disciplined they built stuff they hodled they did all the things that we've talked about at nauseum um and they kind of look lucky at the end but at the end of the day you know luck is preparation meeting opportunity right so i think um masses the masses will end up not unfortunately Benefiting at the level that many of us who build in this space would like to see, but that doesn't mean that we won't uplift 
many more than any other time in history and out of poverty into circular economies and into things like that. I think the, the idealism says it has to be winner take all. I think the pragmatism is that um, we can do our best to try and make it easier to onboard folks, to make things less frictionless without giving up security and sovereignty, um, to try and educate and inform um, and, and give them something to think about. Uh, as they get pounded with the mainstream narrative of CNBC or Bloomberg or what have you, you know, uh, will Larry Fink get most of the credit? Sure, he will. Um, And everyone will hate that. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter, right? If the asset class rises, if $200 trillion worth of stuff gets tokenized, um, then then for, for the most part, we should end up in a better place. I paused because I'm waiting for someone to. You yeah, know, the microphone. Brandy, to me, yeah. are you there? She's struggling a lot. I don't know if uh, you know uh, the Black Rocks news in itself presents as uh, another step in stone in the institutional investment part, but because whenever we're talking about that, we also are talking about where these big players are gonna park their money uh are they gonna go um on the real assets are are they gonna go directly invest in eth as an asset class or are they gonna take this quote-unquote safer route through these etfs yeah we can hear you we can hear you brandy um yeah i think that's a good point uh was that sarah i'm not sure who that was but I, i think that was a good point it almost doesn't matter right like in other words the entry point doesn't have to be the stopping point. So if a lot of people come into this world through an ETF, then if they stay there, that may not be, you know, the best for what they thought. Um, Because certainly holding the actual asset is better than only a paper representation of it. And certainly not having Bitcoin or ETH be controlled 80% of the currency like gold is by central banks or by large institutions is better than not having it be that way. However, if you don't get them into the game, they never can learn the game. And so the, the hope would be that you know people get exposure to the volatility or the price action of Bitcoin or ETH or one of these things, something like a Fidelity or a BlackRock. And then they realize, wait a minute, you know what? Maybe now that I've like broken the seal on this, I want to learn more. And then through activities like what Steven's working on, which I'm fascinated to learn more about. Some other things like they start to understand what circular economies mean, how they work better than kind of the current system that we've been in for the last hundred years. And and they start to participate and then they get exposed to other tokens and realize, well, wait a minute, I need, I need a wallet uh, that can hold that. And I don't know what a wallet is. And then there's solutions for magic link, which has obviously raised a ton of money or MetaKeep, which is in our portfolio uh, that make it frictionless to have a non-custodial, Web3 wallet on any chain um, without having to have anything other than an email address. And so you can have the benefits of that and not have to jump through the hoops of a MetaMask or, a, you know, or God knows one of these other things. Or, you know, it, it, I think at the end of the day, it just means the work has just begun for all of us to, to evangelize, to educate, to, to lead by example and to not throw shade at these things, but also not overly glorify them. They're just going to mean more action and more volume and more entry. But what we need to do is move people through, while we can, uh, the the rapid learning curve of what it means to kind of take some of that off the table and, and be, have it, you know, sovereign to themselves and to protect what liberties they can with it and all those things. So, Quite eloquently put. Uh, Brandy, may I request you... Uh, to bring one of our uh, sponsors on the table. Uh, He's a representative from Casutel that I introduced in the early stage, Andreas Fink. I would like to request you to get your hands up as, uh, you know, I don't have the power to pull you up over here. Yeah. All right. Uh, Can you I'm over here in the matrix. I just want to let everybody know I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm not. Uh, 
Everything's fine. I want to carry the conversation over. I got to hear a lot of what Chris said. I just want to acknowledge um, all the speakers that are here today as the spotlight guests. We do have featured spotlight guests in order for us to contain this wonderful conversation. So the format is very simple. We have a topic and the topic is introduction to Web3 unpacking the basics of blockchain technology. We have experts that have been here and been part of our community for the last 30 weeks. Hello, 30 weeks, drum roll. And uh, we, we keep on tinkering around with the format because we, we know not everyone is at the same place. Whether you're an expert, air quotes, <laughs> right? Because we are all kind of new at this, 10 years in the making. Um, we're still learning and we still have maybe some questions, maybe some problem solving that we can answer not only for the people in our inner circle today, but touch on points that are meaningful to you in your current operation. For example, if you're a startup, what level of Web3 are you still trying to figure out? Are you in the development stages or have you reached your final frontier where everything is operating, you're decentralized, you're inoperable, I love that word. There's just many opportunities to speak on very basic terms so that we can start to unpack, oh, maybe there is a little bit of a challenge still. And uh, I wanna offer anyone out there in the, we have a wonderful crowd today. I see Ratika, yeah. who's on our team, Levi's here, who is also doing trading. Uh, Br Brandy. Yes. I would like to introduce you to uh, Andreas Fink from Casuatel. Uh, remember, we talked about Casuatel. Now, I don't know uh, if you guys know. Of course, I gave you guys a little brief uh, rundown about what they got, what they do. But I would love uh, him to talk about his experience in working with, with West African countries. Also, the basics of blockchain from that point of view. How did you guys raise? funds through an IPO. Um, another point I want to ask, I know I'm going to run ahead of myself. She's the host. I'm the co-host. So I'm she, over here. Know. Like I, if I could pinch you, I would right now, but that's okay. We won't get <laughs> you can punch me. You can punch me later, but here's the scoop though. The, these guys work with WikiLeaks uh, once. So a fantastic project, uh, and I, I, as a journalist, is just tingling inside me. Uh, how did you guys pull up with that project? Tell us a little bit about Kajutel, um, and how did you guys utilize your IPO in the context of the basics of blockchain technology? And of course, a little bit about you too, sir. Mr. Fink, are you there? Ah, okay. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hi, Andreas. Nice okay. to meet you. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, well, uh, the project we're doing in Western Africa is basically to bring internets to the people. So uh, the population there can use the internet because you, you keep forgetting that uh, you know, the, in the infrastructures we have in Europe and US and uh, uh, well-developed countries in Asia um, is, is like every day's life. And uh, the infrastructure we have in Africa is like 20 years behind, uh, with the exception of maybe South Africa and you know, countries like Egypt and Kenya, where it's a little bit more developed. Um, we were we're working in, in, in Western Africa, in Guinea, in Guinea-Bissau, uh, and in Sierra Leone. We're not working in Papua New Guinea, which is somewhere completely else. <laughs> That's in, 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 in Asia. Um, in those countries, you have an internet penetration of like 10%. Um, uh, it was when we started, it was like 4% of the population even have access to the internet. And that affects also new technologies like blockchain things, because if you don't have internet, you cannot use the blockchain. Um, there's a whole environment in, in those countries uh, for payments and for um, uh, cash exchange 
which you cannot imagine. You know, in Europe, you use your credit card everywhere. You just pay for it. You do wire transfer from bank to bank, uh, and so on. And all this infrastructure is missing, so people are running around with physical cash. And the blockchain is something which could solve this, but unless you have internet in place where you can actually use the blockchain, you cannot come with uh, projects to do this. And we're trying to change this. And the first step is actually to bring internet to the homes, uh, to the public, uh, by building physical infrastructure. And physical infrastructure build-ups are expensive. They cost a lot of money. So what we did is we launched uh, an ICO and said, okay, we're going to raise money to build this infrastructure. So we basically just said, well, if you buy one of the token, it's a share of that company, and that's your investment in that company. Now, uh, for American investors, this became a little bit difficult because, you know, with lots of those strange laws they have over there in terms of shares. I mean, just the term which you mentioned, like accredited investor, that just doesn't exist in the place where I live. You know, everybody can invest in whatever he wants. If he loses it, well, that's your own problem, your, your own risk. So we, there, there's nothing to be accredited for. The only guys who have to be accredited in some way is like consultants, which are, uh, you know, appraising uh, financial products and so on, like bankers or uh, investment confirm uh, uh, investment um, consultant and so on. And um, so... Um, uh, we started with an ICO, we collected some money, and that money actually allowed us to kickstart the project. Uh, we invested the hell of a lot of our own money into it, and we're now live in two countries. Uh, the third country is coming soon, and we're changing the shape in those countries uh, to bring the internet to the people. So. They can use a lot of things. And we have tons of more ideas, uh, like uh, introducing a payment system uh, with some kind of cryptocurrency um, uh, token that uh, everything is becoming very easy. Uh, That's sorry, basically what to which, co which countries? Because you, you didn't say which two countries are you now? Uh, we are live in Sierra Leone. We are live in Guinea. Uh, we are licensed in Guinea-Bissau, but we haven't started yet because we're still looking for the right people and the infrastructure for the international connectivity is only there since like one year. Before it was like impossible to get there without laying fiber to the neighboring country. And, you know, there was problems there to, to even connect it somewhere. But that's now changing, so we are getting ready to start in Guinea-Bissau, where we actually wanted to start first because that's the country with the worst infrastructure. So there's the, the biggest need there. And, uh, and your, your organization has been around for some time. I was excited yes. to have you as a part of this organization and to be in partnership with your, your company. I know we'll be speaking deeply into it uh, coming up in Dubai at the Web3 World Consortium. The reason why I was excited still is the impact the impact of the individual's lives that they can receive not only internet but education i mean at the core of evolution or revolution is information in order to evolve these um, wonderful people so can you speak to the impact side of why you started this company um well, there's there's different aspects. Uh, basically, I'm in telecommunications since 30 years, so I have a lot of experience on the technology side. But on the other side, you know, if you want to start up an internet provider in Europe, it's like a lost cause because there's plenty of competitors in the market. Uh, the market is brutal, and uh, the, everybody is competing with everybody, so you don't have a differentiator. If you go to Western Africa, the only competitors you have is like the mobile operators. And the mobile operators at that time, they had like only 2G networks. So mm -hmm. there is a high demand. Uh, the prices are extremely high uh, because the mobile operators, they charge for every gigabyte you're transferring. And, uh, you know, they basically make a fortune out, out of the people because they can. They have some kind of monopoly or duopolies. And... Uh, you know, that's a market where you want to be because 
you you can come into a market uh, even as an underdog and you can make something happen and now you're saying you know this the, the education that's actually a big thing we're working on a huge project with the government um to bring uh the internet to uh, over a thousand schools and they have like hundred thousand schools to serve at the end um and uh, we're starting with about a hundred with about a thousand schools to connect them to the internet and we made a special deal with the government um and that's a, an enormous project uh which requires a lot of funding and then th there are some um, a non-profit organization which actually fund the education part of it and it looks like uh we will be the the um operator who supply most of those schools because we are there we have the infrastructure to serve them and others are not so that's uh very important because that's also bringing the the those countries a lot further you know so many things depend on the internet of you know trades education it's just facilitating everything if anyone wants to get in contact with you would I, it be okay if, yeah if we do would. have we do have a uh, colm mcqueen he is a funding um expert uh funding consultant so if mr mcqueen if you want to join in on the conversation would appreciate it as well as anybody down there um uh, mr andreas i do have a question for you in particular how much are you looking for in funding at this point of stage post ipo i, I believe your token cash cag is available at the moment for grabs where is it available um uh, which platforms could be um you know you buy the tokens uh it's currently on american talks and another one um which i don't remember right now i haven't looked at it for a while um well, we, we, what, we'd, what I'd like to do is just make sure that the information is available to anybody who's ready to receive the information. And inside our back channel, if you notice it says networking, you can definitely talk to or get in contact with Andreas Fink. He is, as you know, the original uh, co-founder or founder in the project. So I welcome you to uh, connect with him at a later time. I just want to say thank you for being here and also supporting the developments as Web3 needs more people like you to help the underdeveloped communities get to this next level. I want to say thank you so much and we're just going to keep on with the conversation. Um, thank you so much. Okay, so we're moving into a, a deeper dialogue. We, we wanted to keep it basic today, but hey, you know what? It's organic. So yes, three is an organic uh, platform for community uh, where we have emerge and see conversations. And so today is introducing an Web3 and unpacking the basics of blockchain. So we're gonna go around the spotlights guests and anyone out there who also wants to lift their hand to join the conversation to talk a little bit about how they got started. What is the first thing that you would like for people to know getting started with the basics of blockchain? Tom, the block. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Well, um, it's something I do often. I also go to schools actually to, to talk about it. I love to talk about it. Um, I work as a solution architect in the technology and also in legacy. So with relation to the first conversation, I, I've been working in Swift and National Bank of Belgium as a QA system. So I know these centralized systems. And, um, um, like yeah. art, it's, it's unfortunately it's a bit loud where you are. Or I'm sorry, you, yeah, I will mute. I will get back to you. Sorry, I cannot. Uh, I'm in the public transport, so it's another example that we're living in in Matrix. <laughs> All is good. Levi, I'd like to call you up to the stage too, if you can come on up, if you have the availability. And also, uh, mm -hmm. Carolina, I think you can speak to this, especially being in media. And Mr. also, yeah, Mr. McQueen, if you can come up as well, please. And uh, anybody else wants to join in on the conversation. Thank you. Yeah. And Andreas, we'll, we'll offer you the mic once again on the, the basics of unpacking blockchain technology. Uh, knowing that you have this 
very unique telecom company that's going to change the way that Africans use and learn from. What is the basic pieces that you you just go back to as the foundation of your development? Mr. Fink? All right, Scott, we'll toss the mic over to you. Yeah, one of the things that has really helped me to understand what blockchain is, is to get involved in DeFi. Because, you know, when you're when you're investing in a token, and you go on to Coinbase or another exchange, that doesn't really give you the feel of what blockchain is, you know, holding these tokens, um, especially like, like Bitcoin. Wonderful. I own a lot of it. I love it. But when I got involved in DeFi, then you really understand because you're swapping tokens, you're bridging tokens, you are really using the blockchain, you're using multiple blockchains. And then when you do bridges from say one blockchain to the other blockchain to the other blockchain, you understand how these things are connected and how, and how they work. Um, so again, I'm a real big proponent on get your hands dirty, get in there and use the blockchain and you can really start you know, to see. Now, to be honest with you, the, your first experience is probably going to be like, man, this is a pain in the ass. Um, but that's okay because this is a brand new technology and we need to get used to it and understand some of you know where it's providing us you know value and where it's not. The value right now is in all being hands-on in this brand new asset class. Blockchain is going to transform the world. Um, so get your hands dirty. Mm-hmm. So let's talk, let's talk decentralization. Decentralization, and then now that we know, especially with the U.S. government, um, what should people be informed about before they get started in DeFi? I can toss that back to you, uh, Scott. Well, the, I mean, one thing is, is that the dreaded CBDC, we all need to be aware of that. And we all need to understand the difference between a central bank digital currency, which when they start, when the countries start to roll this out, they will make it so enticing. They will make it sound like the best thing since sliced bread. And we have to understand the difference between centralized and decentralized. And, And that's the biggest thing, right? The, the blockchain that we are talking about mostly here in this call is decentralized blockchains. Um, the cool thing about BlackRock is that they chose to put that, that Biddle fund on Ethereum, decentralized blockchain. That's a good sign. Um, uh, we'll see how that goes because we know that more and more countries, more uh, businesses are going to create these centralized blockchains um, that don't offer the same ability. It, it's really taking traditional finance and just moving it into the blockchain. That is not what I am in, in it for. Decentralization is, is the key because it gives the people the power back. Mm. Yeah, so unlike Web 2.0, where centralization and the platforms like Facebook, Google, Amazon dominate the Web 2 space, Web 3 is aiming uh, now, as we know, to distribute that power, that data, that ownership. So are there any platforms that our community want to share that they're using this decentralized when it comes to achieving that data uh, be their own? Does anybody want to speak to that, Levi? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm probably not the person to ask about that. I, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty basic when it comes to the stuff I use. I just, uh, when it comes to crypto, I'm mostly, you know, you know, investing and you know, using these type of normal, uh, normal hosting sites and wallets. I'm, I'm not a huge into the DeFi stuff that Scott, that Scott is. He's uh, far better than me on that. All, all, all as well. well. Let's shift the question over to you then. So unpacking the basics of your trading platform, what are top three things that you would suggest to your clients or the audience to get started? Yeah. Um, so to get like when, when we start talking about getting started as far as, um, you know, when I, I work specifically on day trading, so I'm, I'm uh, I have long-term investments in crypto just because I see the long-term value and then 
in in the day trading world is it's kind of you're getting rid of any long term um, edge that you have, and you're you're essentially just trading uh, the market movements during the day, which is kind of why day trading is a pain in the ass. Um, but so when it comes to working with Oh, did we lose him? Welcome to technology. Sarab? Yeah, you, you sounded like an AI over there. Welcome to technology. Welcome to the next level of you. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Okay. Simulations over here. You want another news? Is that what you want from me? Uh, no, I want to I wanna ask the audience. Uh, what questions they have and if they can post it in the networking or comment area on the back end. Yes, the comment section. I don't I don't know if, we, if they can navigate through it. Uh, by the way, guys, as hosts of the show, it's not Twitter. We do not have the power to pull you over here on the speakers, speakers panel. So if you have to add something, you have to get your hands up. Only then I, you know, we have the power to pull you up. Um, to Let's use the comments... Let's call to Tom you, back Tom. up. He's present. Sure. Ah, yes, thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the noise uh, earlier. So I was explaining. So I, I often explain blockchain basics, uh, sometimes in school, sometimes to people. Um, I love to do it. I love to talk about it. Um, basically, I refer to it as a trust machine. And a uh, trust machine comes in many different flavors. Uh, centralized or, or permissioned ledgers are not per se wrong. Um, and actually, when I try to explain blockchain, I try just exactly not to talk about cryptocurrencies because from the moment, I mean, it is a great application, but it's not the, the strongest element of what we can achieve with this. Uh, also, it, it, the blockchain on itself can be just also like like a quite dumb infrastructure, but the, the things it can bring with the ease of a checksum and when just by applying simple math, um, it, it can bring a lot of value to many, many different cases, not just to the crypto space. Um, but so I refer to it as a trust machine and, and it's not always needed that the people understand what are the different components in the machine, but what they should understand is what you can do with it and, and which value it, it can bring. I mean, value like trust. In a, if you add trust to many different cases, businesses or private things in your life, then it, things become easier, smoother, more efficient, more better for the planet. So oh, there's a lot of things, but basically I refer to it as, a, as a, a trust machine. And this way you can explain it more easy. Uh, hey, Tom, I have a question for you about that. Um, yes. I, I love that description of the trust machine. But what do you what do you say about decentralized blockchains versus centralized? Well, actually, there's a lot of benefits in centralized. Uh, well, centralized we mean permissioned ledgers. Huh? Means, uh, for example, in Europe we have um, the big institutional blockchain is called the EBSI. Uh, it's European Blockchain and Services Infrastructure. So, yeah, just to disclose, I'm I'm in Brussels. I'm in Europe. Uh, so I'm, I'm involved in IoT and 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 data spaces and so on and. EBSI, so European Blockchain Inf uh, Service Infrastructure, is a is a key element in our in our ecosystem. It's absolutely institutional. It's absolutely permissioned. We can nearly not get in, so it's absolutely not in the same ideology. There is no religion around it. It's pure corporate and institutional. But nevertheless, we can take advantage of it. We have use cases on that. It's uh, to exchange and to prove your uh, diplomas, for example. There is some cases around data sharing where it's uh, where it's useful. Obviously, there is no uh, big uh, bump and crypto behind that, but there is an infrastructure of trust. And that makes a whole lot of uh, corporate systems or has the ability to make a lot of corporate and institutional flows way more efficient. And, uh, and that's a benefit. So I'm... I'm an early adopter, um, OG from the early Bitcoin times, um, and I have a lot of friends still in that space, uh, but in the half one leg I am in, I'm in the institutional space, and I think it's very nice to have ideology, and I still have the ideology also, but um, 
there's not a lot of the original ideology from the Bitcoin times. So everything is very polluted now in the mainly crypto space. So I went forward with the realistic implementations and, and we need to, it's a pity to say, but we need to embrace and improve the legacy. We cannot replace the legacy. I, I changed my belief in that. I thought also that we, once we have this technology that we will just make a new world beside the old world because the old world is sick. But I don't believe that's a realistic plan anymore. I see the evolution. I see things moving, but it's moving. We are moving it from the inside. Uh, and all these big uh, players that adopted, uh, adopted for one reason or the other, most of them, they do it for their own benefits. Um, I've been working in National Bank, uh, SWIFT also, a lot of different banks, they all adopt the technology, none of them has ideology. The only thing they want is efficiency and, and they will not give this efficiency back to the customer, it's just to fill their pockets more. Um, so technology is widely implemented around me, I can give a lot of examples of, of realistic and current life implementations, M most of them pass under the surface. Now, there's a lot to do on AI, for example. There's an, an important relationship between blockchain and AI. Everyone wants to do AI and nobody or very very much people say that they don't want to do blockchain anymore because they, they it's a, for them it's already an old story. But in that whole continuum, uh, there is a, a direct relation between blockchain, AI and IoT and, and that's the next generation of our digital society. And there's a lot to gain even from the centralized systems in there, the centralized or, or permissioned ledgers. Uh, sorry, uh, I feel maybe too many words, but yeah, it is it is what's happening. Eh? Does that un answer your question, or I don't know why you exactly asked that question, or you have a specific scope? No, that that answered that answered the question. I, I think it's uh, uh, you know it's it's the wonderful technology, and I think that AI and IoT. Uh, you know, we're going to ride on blockchain. I think that's the power. I think blockchain just brings a lot of power because now you can, you know, you, you can transfer this data and this value uh, in a much more secure, uh, efficient way, as, as you pointed out. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just concerned about, um, yeah, about, I agree with you that I don't think it's going to be the Satoshi, uh, you know, world that maybe, he, you know, he envisioned in a lot of people early on. I think it will take this combination of both. I am. That's why I really focus on the word decentralized. Centralized. I think there's going to be plenty of opportunity for centralized blockchain stuff. But as a whole, we just want to make sure we don't completely lose the decentralized value of it. So. Well, the yeah. problem is the blockchain trilemma. It's the relation between uh, between the three elements like uh, security, performance, and decentralization. So you cannot have all three. So de full decentralization comes at the cost of, of performance or, or secure. Uh, um, so we need performance system means uh, high debit throughput per second and so on. And if you have a full decentralized system, you, it comes at the cost of your performance. So it's uh, useful for some cases, but in many cases we need a way bigger throughput. Uh, technically, I mean... Um, and, and that's the bottleneck in the in a, in a fully decentralized system. So the most optimal implementations we do is actually a combination of high performance uh, permissioned ledgers that then have a, something like a, a slower trust anchor in the public uh, blockchains. So you can always prove integrity of this private blockchain on a public ledger. And, and this combination is like a hybrid combination with anchoring in the public. And that's how we actually do it. So we have... Well, it's not even a layer two. It's really a combination between centralized and decentralized. So they come to me as a pair. Each of them, each of their own uh, functionality in the cluster. Tom, yeah, you're not so at all good basic. at explaining that. You're, you're really good at explaining that. So thank yeah, you. but it's not at all basic. It's quite advanced. So I think the scope of this call here was about basics, no? We're going to have an intermediate version and the advanced version soon. <laughs> but always nice to have you over here, Tom. Yeah, um, welcome. Thank you. Brandy, you want to say something? It's your show. You there? Are you trying out new mics? Or shall we move on to the next news article? So I do have a new news testing article. Testing one, waiting. two, testing one, two. Yeah, receiving you. Here we are. Receiving you, Brandy. All right. 
Thank you. Yeah, I want to say thank you, Tom, to blog for being a part of the community. We've had some deep conversations on very innovative projects that can re-inhabit the ocean life and um, the education behind that. It's all about preparation. Uh, the reason why I'm in Web3 myself is because I had this vision. And this vision was that we can change the way that poverty to prosperity really steps in for the future by upskilling the youth and starting at the age as early as five years old. And so my mission, not only just to host a wonderful community event on a weekly basis, but it's to pay attention to what is needed and what is harmonizing uh, a freedom for a lot of people who miss the boat in its early stages. Some of us were born into this world with unfortunate poverty wrapped around our back. And in that, we still live that way. I visit India, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, UAE on the back on the back alleys of watching this, I won't say slavery, but you know, unfortunately, there's a lot going on that you can't see that's not glitz and glamour over there. And that happens to be in Guatemala, Puerto Rico, US, you name it. So the concept here is let's give the basics because if we have educators out there speaking positively about Web3, it's not that we need to be on VR every day. That's not the concept. And I think people misunderstand all the time what Web3 is. And so the basics, and I, I'll go to Christine in a second because I want to I wanna celebrate her new position and her awards. But the basics are decentralization, right? I already mentioned that Amazon and Google and Facebook, these dominating worlds of the Web2 space, is now giving opportunity to Web3 where we get to own our own data. And blockchain technology allows us to do that because if we can store the data, then what can the kids do in the future? What can the kids do with their own data in the future? I know we've had cash on here before, which is mining that data and then reselling that data. That's an example of something pretty basic. Understand how you actually store your own data. There's wallets out there. There's platforms out there. There's dApps and there's apps, depending if you want to go that far down central or decentralization. Another area, which is blockchain technology. The blockchain technology is also still somewhat confusing to the modern ear. Let's just imagine a child is in school, they're sitting there writing down their arithmetic, and that arithmetic is on a piece of paper. That documentation can be on a smart contract in the future. Why? Because we have technology advancements that will allow it to be. How do we start? Well, we start with Cayutel, uh, companies like Cayutel. We know that it's not easy to get into the uh, ground level of education, but all of us, like Tom is, like most of us, all of us are the leaders of this pack. And the more that we stand in and we meet with the schools, the more that we stand in and meet with our politicians, the more that we stand in and we do have a vote and a say. And we do that by numbers, you know, building community like this platform. So helping others understand blockchain technology and decentralized ledger and why the records are important for transparency. I believe that Web3 gives us the leverage that we need in order to enable not only peer-to-peer -peer transactions, but it enables us to just remove the intermediaries, just go straight to the store, the source. And so, uh, you know, we can go down the rabbit hole in cryptocurrencies and trading and desk and going into, you know, making whale of money. And but at the core of it, it's so much bigger. It's the it's the it's the muscle of our bodies. It's the fascia of how everything works together. Take, for example, we have uh, supply chain management. We have ships that are bringing in supplies that are import-export. Every single aspect of what's coming in and out of these countries can be documented on a smart contract, and we'll know that we need more or we don't. It's really that simple. Why do we need to overcreate and then throw away and have tons of waste? That's just one example. And the digital currencies operate on blockchain. So at the core of that model means that we have supply chain, QR codes, we have 
um, multiple different layers to understand what companies are creating what and what value they're doing and what carbon and output they're doing. There's so many layers to positive impact that cryptocurrencies and blockchains are doing. So I will pause for a moment because I could go down on interoperability, privacy and security, tokenization, governance all day long. But, you know, I want to humanize this conversation with who is here right now and how we get to pioneer in education. Christine, I'd love to invite you to this topic because you actually are pioneering out of Canada. And I saw that you had some. It was her birthday a couple of weeks ago. Christine, welcome to the stage. Hey, thanks, Brandy. And uh, oh, good to see you and Sarav. I'm so sorry. I've been so absent from all levels of and all platforms of social media. But I did take temporary full custody of my two grandchildren, both who have significant um, challenges. One is autistic and the other one has got some physical disabilities as well as some developmental disabilities. So been inundated with that as well as other things that I'm doing here in Canada. One of them was really leading up to the announcement yesterday, which is um, the appointment of the director of Canada for uh, the Global AI Council, which was mm-hmm. launched by uh, Kate Hancock and Dan Robbins. Um, and it's their kind of you know thought that we get out there and we provide AI education for free for all. And I looked at that and thought, like, AI education, it's great for so many things, but it's super great. And Web3 is, is awesome as well for people with disabilities who may have been excluded. So I think from an accessibility standpoint, I am welcoming AI and I'm welcoming Web3 because I think it's going to solve a lot of the issues that have been prevalent for years and years and years. And right now, are you? what are the top three initiatives that you see coming out of the gate with this role and mine? So for me personally, I'm, I'm here. I am making connections across Canada, um, delivering the AI education um, that's already there as part of the platform. I would like to, um, as much as possible, bring it to accessibility. I know that there's conversations that are happening with Starlink and others, and I, I just think that making, making all AI available for all persons, um, no matter whether you're located in remote northern community in Canada, uh, an indigenous community predominantly, um, or you're in a metropolis area, rural um, urban area, I think making sure that we all have access to this because it is going to be a game changer is kind of one of the things that I'm really spearheading is how do we get this out to the the masses? And I'm working with some universities here in Canada um, on just that, like, you know, educating the newest, the, the youngest generation on this because adoption in the old, older generation is a little bit more of a steeper climb. And I think we can, can really make sure on the young side, Hey, this is what this is. This is why it's important for you. Um, let's adopt it now because you're either going to adopt it or it's going to adopt you later on. So that's kind of where I'm coming with this, with this uh, initiative. Uh, I'm so happy that you showed up today. I've been watching your works and I know your backstory. So I, I want to say thank you. And how can we support you and your organization? What, if anything at all, do you have any ask from our experts and our listeners. Yeah, I mean, if anybody's got access to any sort of uh, AI educational tools, uh, speakers about AI, by all means, pass them along to me. And um, we'd love to get them as some of speakers or providers of education around AI um, as part of the global programming. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I just want to, everyone, hands a round of applause. I know everyone here deserves a round of applause, but I, I know Christine is working in a very unique area of disabilities and, of course, her own personal life. And she's a business, she's, an, she's a serial or a serial entrepreneur. Yes, very, very, very big deal. Okay, so we're coming up on the top of the hour, and I want to invite Our last words, uh, just going around short window of where you uh, need the most support in your organization and what you're willing to offer to our audience, just like Christine has shared. Scott? Hmm. I'm really trying to build my YouTube channel um, and I'm trying to cross 
uh, pollinate, um, you know, crypto adoption. So I'm really uh, trying to attract, you know, new people that aren't that familiar with crypto, try to demystify it a little bit, but also with the, the freedom culture also that really want to get away from, you know, potential government, big business, big pharma, what we can do about that. And I think that getting outside of the financial system is one of the best ways to start. Mm. And um, yeah, so uh, YouTube, uh, Crypto Cowboy, Montana, Crypto Cowboy MT. I love it. Will you make make sure that that's posted and everyone also follow that uh, direction and post any information about you. Please follow our speakers and our guests and make them know that you are also in the audience. I'll go ahead and Toss it over to Tom DeBlock. Anything that you're looking for uh, or want to support? Um, so I would like to give something uh, to the audience. Uh, maybe uh, you, can share, you can maybe share it later, or I don't know how to give it. But we, in relation to what, I, what we just earlier said, and also for uh, Christine, there is a, a reward that we published. It's like a quite heavy work. A paper is 50 pages, but it explains, and also in the practice, how the three enabling technologies work together like AI, DLT, and um, IoT, so we like to offer that, and what, with regards to my own activities, so as you know, uh, Brandy, I'm in the non-profit AOTI, and we have the European Web3 Accelerator, we organize a hackathon, so that would be something that people can also take uh, advantage to have, uh, to get more understanding, to get practical hands-on, and also it's a, it's a sharing community, it's co-creation, and, um, and really inclusive. Uh, it's online. You can find it on my LinkedIn profile. It starts in the. It's a two-month online um, technical program this time, and then in September we'll do another brainstorming. But we're really like building things together and then sharing the components for other uh, startups or use cases to use these material components instead of engaging in endless experimentation and then probably throw away and start all over again. So we really help to accelerate startups and, and, and people and it happens in the non-profit area. So, um, so it's real because uh, it's Web3 is intended to be inclusive and um, in many cases it's not. Many implementations are not inclusive but we, we tend to change that and really do the things so we invite you just to join me on my LinkedIn profile and I can share you the free work, like the AOTI paper on a, uh, on the convergence. And then also I invite you to join the hackathon. If you know any technical people, they could join it, gain all the experience and uh, come back with the uh, ready to roll. For your yeah, own thank you, Tom. Really appreciate you. I think also Kayutel could be a fun partnership for doing these hackathons and, and bridging what they're doing over in Africa with where you're over in your yes, it's a little I'm also bit in loud, Africa. So. I'm in Kenya with the with the this time one year program to land DLT in this case for farmers in Kenya and it's uh, something that easily can be copy pasted for any other African country. That's why I posed the question so in which countries uh, Andreas is, but so I'm available if you want to learn something for doing good, like for free for good, I'm all in. I love it. I love, love, love. So part of the Yes3 network is not your home. It's not your workplace or your institution. It's your third place. So Yes3.0 isn't just about Web3. It's about your community. So not your home, not your workplace not your institution, it's your community. So I believe that common unity is how we get things done, how we create, how we create momentum and how we support each other. Like Tom has a key and Andreas has a lock. And so together we can continue to create and make abundance happen in our world. Andreas, I'd love to hear from you. So uh, what are you looking for, if anything at all, and how can you support our listeners and or our spotlight guests today? Uh, I didn't really catch the question. Can you repeat it again? Sure. Uh, if there's anything that you could use more support in your organization and in your developments, and if there's anything that you're offering to our listeners, our spotlight guests today to get involved with your projects. Well, we need more people uh, supporting the project by purchasing um, 
uh, the the uh, cryptocurrency token because we still have some unsold one from the I IPO. Uh, <clears throat> secondly, of course, we are open to collaborate a lot uh, with uh, institutional investors and so on. And we're actually going to Dubai uh, uh, in a couple of weeks um, to discuss uh, our projects with uh, bigger investors um, in an event there. I love it. Thank you so much for doing the work that you're doing in the world. And with that, I will start to close our room. I want to say thank you to everyone who showed up today as you are a part of this community and it is helping with the developments and, of course, with the Web3 space. As you go about your week, turn in and tune in to why you do what you do, why you exist on this planet. Yes, 3.0 is not only about abundance and wealth. It's about you. It's about our discussions and how we create together on the basic fundamentals and the principles of Web3. But really, it's about bringing it home, bring it into your house, your community, maybe even with your parents, right? Your local uh, supporting community, making sure they have the information, getting them excited about being on these platforms. And of course, prioritizing, as you heard today, your own privacy and your own security. So as we navigate through the existing transitional worlds of web two to web three, I wanna say it is crucial to be informed on a daily basis. So please chime in to the Yes3 network, which is the organic growth network on LinkedIn. We're also going out to Twitter as our second phase. We will also be bringing on more speakers, influencers, and organizations seeking capital and also funders looking for that capital. The platform was created not only to raise awareness, it was also to make sure that your projects get funded, yay. And um, building trust. Building trust is important, not only as a founder, but for a funder to come in and see that, that you are the core of the mission, not just another product or service out there, but that there's a human behind your mission. So I want to invite you all to show up weekly here on Yes3O, Abundance and Wealth, different topics for different seasons. We know that right now there's New York NFT world happening, and we know that we're on the upspin of that. We know that in Dubai, we'll be there on April 22nd with the, uh, with the um, Web3 World Consortium, sponsored by and hosted by the Coin Republic and Cayutel and others. So thank you again for showing up today. I'm so grateful. Uh, let me share with you what I need. Sometimes I put myself in the background. I'm human, just like everyone else. I need to really just have more support on this show. Uh, we are expanding. And sometimes I, I see that it is crypto and it is Web3, but sometimes I just want to make it human because this is all about us. So if you want to share this message out there with others as we go on the YouTube and also Twitter and this page, that would be wonderful. And of course, your suggestions and comments, that would be also very nice. Thank you again for showing up today. Appreciate you. and. We'll see you next time on Yes3O. Thank you. Bye for now.